Jews in old me fans The magic spell you cast This is love the iron rose When you kiss me So as we sort of near the end here one of the things that we need to do is we need to connect everything that needs to be connected up to the bus uh, to the bus. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through all of these and connect them to the bus so that this way we can actually get some sort of thing uh, working here. Now another thing that we need to do is to distribute the clock signal because it needs to go all over the place. Every single one of these registers has a clock signal. So here, 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 uh, here, here. So. This clock signal needs to be basically all over the place. It actually needs to be in the program counter too. So I'm going to connect the clock signal up to all these wires so then we can remove these wires with the labels and then connect what needs to be connected up to the bus up to the bus. So I think I'll start with the clock signals here. So I've connected up the clock module and it's these blue lines that's sort of going all around the CPU which means we have no more of these sort of um, lines that have clock written on them. They're all taken out now because they're all connected to the clock obviously. Um, so the next step is going to be connecting everything up to the bus. So each of these modules is going to connect to the bus in a similar but yet very different way. So all of our registers are going to be using these sides of these two chips of these 74 LS173 chips. This side, the data side, is going to be connected up to the bus and these are all 8 bits um, so they're going to be using the full 8-bit bus. And same thing for the register B, and same thing for register A. They're going to be connecting up to the bus just like that. Now the memory um, is going to connect from the bus from this chip, which is our uh, three-state buffer, up to the bus. Now there's a small error because I put the three-state buffer on the left-hand side of the breadboard because I hadn't yet figured out whether I wanted this breadboard to actually be on this side of the bus or on this side. But now that it's here, we just have to connect the lanes across the breadboard um, over into the bus. Now. The last one is the ALU. Now the ALU is going to connect from here up into the bus. That's pretty simple. Now when you're using a three-state buffer, for example, to connect stuff up to the bus, make sure you're connecting the outputs of the three-state buffers because we have stuff connected to the inputs of the three-state buffers. So for example, for the RAM chip, we have this LED display connected up to the inputs of the three-state buffer so that we can see what's always in the RAM. But the output is not always going to be active. There's always going to be something in the RAM, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be active right now. So when it is active, it's going to connect what's here in the LED display up into the output pins of this three-state buffer. Now the output pins are what we want to connect to the bus, not just the input pins or what's always in it, because then we're going to have conflicting data on the bus. So just make sure that you're connecting the right pins up to the bus. Alright, so you can see that I've connected everything up to the bus here, and I use this black wire because I really only use black wire to make ground connections and such, so I had a lot of black wire uh, left over to use, so I decided to make all the bus connections in black wire. Um, but in fact, there's so many bus connections that I ran out of black wire, so I had to use for these last few connections for the RAM module, I had to use green wire. But when the black, I ordered more black wire, and when it comes in, I'm going to go ahead and replace it for black wire, this green wire. Um, so now that everything's connected up to the bus, everything should work, but we're missing one part, which is that these power rails are not connected together for all the different breadboards. Now these two power rails connect together for each individual breadboard, but this rail is, say, not connected to this rail. So what we need to do is go through and connect all the rails together, and then we'll actually have a functioning CPU technically. If we wanted to go ahead and control all these lines by hand, we could actually get the CPU to do something. So what I'm going to do right now um, off camera is I'm just going to go ahead and connect all these power rails up together in the easiest way possible. And I've heard reports where if you connect this many breadboards together, the power distribution and such gets really messed up and it doesn't work so well. Um, now I have a 10 watt power supply which is running on five at 5 volts so that it gives us 2 amps which should be more than enough for um, the CPU. So I don't know what kind of issues we're going to have so I'm just going to connect them in the easiest way possible and if we have issues then I'm just going to troubleshoot those later. So I was going to start hooking up all of these power rails together um, but then I realized like I already stated uh, we don't have any black wire and I don't want to redo these bus lines as well as power rails just to show you guys errors that we'll have with power distribution because honestly if there's going to be errors then we might as well make the errors and then solve them as well in the same video. So I think I'm just going to end the video here and when I get the black wire I'm going to redo these bus connections and I'm going to connect all the power rails together off camera and then we'll see um, the sort of problems that we have to deal with in the next video. 
So please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Kiel Mohadeen, and I'll catch you guys later.